So after that, ye believed who were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. We were, we were sealed. Yes. You know what a seal means? I also brought a seal the other day about for the, for the, for the, for the, for the for pastoral uh, uh, ordination. It was, it was a seal of the authority and the anointing. The, 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 the seal that God places on us. Yes. Samsung, they have a, a seal that says, this is my product, this is my pro I stand by the workmanship of what this seal represents. Apple. Linux, this, 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 this speaker. The seal represents the person, the owner who created it. How much more God is saying the very Holy Spirit is your seal. And it says in verse 14, which is the earnest of our inheritance. It is the down payment. It is the assurity that God is coming back for his people. Until the redemption of the purchased possession. You ever heard of layaway? Yes. Or you ever heard of somebody just paying for something and then they just, okay, I'm, I paid for it, but I'm coming to get it later on. It's already paid for. I, I don't have to, when I come, I don't have to do nothing but just pick it up. Jesus is saying, I've already paid for them. There's some stuff that I've already paid for. I ain't nothing else got to be added to it. You ain't got to, I love what the Bible says when it says in, 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 uh, uh, Psalms 37, I have been young and now I'm old, yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging for bread. We ain't got no business begging nobody because our daddy owned everything. He said, you can ask, but don't you beg nobody. You royalty. You ever seen somebody from the king begging somebody? You ever seen Queen, uh, 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 imagine Prince Harry or somebody begging somebody. They look at them like, man, is you crazy? You belong to royalty. How much more us? Come on. And we have the seal on us. Yes. The seal. When we walk into places, when we were walking that play, I got the seal of God. Yes. Yeah, it's five million, but my daddy on this whole earth. Yes. My daddy on this whole earth and on this whole heaven. You talk about gold, the streets paved with it. You can't go bling, yes. bling. You can't do none of that. And so that's the confidence that we have. It's a boldness. Yes. We're still humble, but we're confident because our confidence gives him glory. Can you imagine your child or, or, or your grandchild or somebody just walking from home to home asking somebody for something to eat? Yeah. The first thing those people go say, where your mom at? Uh -huh. Where your daddy at? Shameful. You know, they ain't feed you. How much more are we walking around begging people and thank God? I'm like, really? I own everything. All you had to do is ask. I'm your provider, but you're going to walk around like a beggar? That don't bring me glory. Come on. You can ask somebody, yes, sure, definitely. But to beg, no. I have not seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging for bread. And so in Galatians 3, 26 and 29, we see the culmination of what God had promised to Abraham. <clears throat> For you all, for you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed. And the heirs according to the promise. Yes. Amen. There we are. <clears throat> it's talking about us. For ye are the children of God by the faith of by faith in Jesus Christ. As by virtue of our faith we become children of God. For as many of you have been baptized into Christ, have put on Christ. Putting on Christ means I'm putting on his identity. Now it's no longer me that the, that they see, they see Christ. The enemy is not afraid of us, he's afraid of Christ. Yeah. That's why when Jesus sent the 70 out and they said, Lord, <clears throat> demons are subject to us in your name. Jesus waved that off. It's, 
Don't marvel at that. That's, that's, that's a small. He said, marvel that your names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. If you want to marvel about something, and so many times in the Bible that I was, and, you, and, you, and I, I, I can imagine the people standing there, they were baffled when people are coming there for healing, and he says, your sins be forgiven. And the people are like, wait, 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 wait a second. Wait, 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 in modern day, wait, 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 wait a second, Jesus. The man didn't come to you for salvation. And Jesus said, well, which one is the greater? For me to say he be healed or his sins be forgiven. The greater is his sins be forgiven. And so when we are baptized and we put on Christ, he says there's neither Jew nor Greek. Yes, there's Jews over in Jerusalem and we, 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 we believe in, in, in praying for them and blessing the nation of, of Israel because God, God commands us and commissions us to do that. I will bless them that bless you, curse them that curse you. For there's need, but he's saying when it comes to my inheritance, when it comes to the blessings of God, there's neither Jew nor Greek. There's neither bond nor free. There's neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ. And I like the way he sums it up. And if ye be Christ, then ye are whose seed? Abraham. Abraham's seed. And heirs according to the promise. So I can go all the way back to Genesis and insert myself when there when he said to your heir to your to, to, to your to your to your descendants. The descendants that he was talking about was not just the children of Israel, he was talking about us. All right. But one of the things that the enemy has robbed us of, and he's gotten us to forget this particular verse, but there's neither Jew, Jew nor Greek. We separate ourselves when it comes to our level of expectancy. We don't expect the same way that someone else does. I said you need to have that same level of expectancy. And if we and if ye be Christ, then ye then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Heirs according to the promise. And so we went from walking into the inheritance, God causing us to walk and to use wisdom and to understanding what's unconditional and what's conditional and what our inheritance is. And now we have to understand that it's not on us to get there. <clears throat> so in Exodus, it's not on you to get there. In Exodus chapter 23, verse 20. Behold I send an angel before you to keep you in the way and to bring you into the place which I have prepared. Behold, I send an angel before thee. It's one of the things that I always pray, Lord, go before me. Yes. Yes. Be there when I get there. Yes, Lord. I, 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 I want you to just go ahead and, and just and just set it up to where you just walk. And God does that. Yes. God will do that. To keep thee in thy way. I'm going to protect you even though I'm going ahead of you. I'm going to protect you along the way. The kingdom of God suffered violent and the violent taketh it by force. So as the kingdom is advancing, as you're advancing toward it, you got an enemy that don't like it. So while you're walking towards your purpose and you're moving towards your inheritance, I'm going to create this hedge. I'm going to create this protection around about you. He sends these angels. And to bring thee. To the place which I have prepared. Spiritual GPS. Amen. Spiritual GPS. Don't even know how we got there. Yeah. Just God. walking. Just, oh, okay, God, you say go over here. I, it, okay, God, you saying go over here. Because God doesn't wait till it makes sense to us yeah, to direct right. us. Yeah. He directs <laughs> us and says, don't work. Because why would it be walking by faith? If it was walking by, if it was, if it was walking by sight, then I would be able to understand and perceive what God is doing. And God is saying, no, I'm causing you to get into a season of trust. Abraham, get up and go to a land I'm going to show you. That's the equivalent of getting on 75, drive north, and then when I, when, when I tell you to get off, that's where you get off, and then that's where I'm going to lead you. And so, in Deuteronomy 6, verses 10 through 12, Deuteronomy chapter 6, Verses 10 through 12. And I'll read. And it shall be when the Lord thy God 
shall have brought thee into the land which I swear unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give thee great and goodly cities which thou buildest not, and houses full of all good things which thou buildest not, and wells digged which thou diggedest not, vineyards and olive trees which thou plantedest not. And when thou shalt have eaten and be full, then beware lest thou forget the Lord, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. My God. God said, I'm going to do something for you that you couldn't have possibly done for yourself. Right. An inheritance. That's what inheritance is. If I had to work for it, slave for it, do all of these different things, then it loses its decadence in the, in the, in the sense to where, you know, when, when someone gives you something, a gift, and all you have to do is receive it. I go back, I, I, I look no further than the, when the greatest gift, which was Jesus Christ's yeah. salvation. That's why I said, by grace ye are saved, unmerited favor, through faith. Not of works, lest any man, if, if, if it's Jesus plus me doing anything, I got a right to stick my chest out. Right. Well, you know, I, you know, I'm up here in heaven because, uh, you know, Jesus, he died, but, you know, I kind of, you know, I had something to do. And the devil, no, 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 no. The devil is a lie. And it shall be when the Lord God have brought thee into the land, which I swear unto their fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give me goodly cities, which thou buildest not. I'm going to drop some stuff in you that you didn't build. Yeah. I'm going to give you some land. I'm going to give you some things that you couldn't have gotten on your own. Yes, it's the yes. favor of God. All you need is the favor of God. That's right. That's right. All you need is the favor of God. People get it twisted. You just do need the favor of God. You ain't got to be the most qualified. You ain't got to have the best education. You ain't got to have the best resume. You ain't got to have the most money. Just the favor of God. Yes. And God will do it so that when they ask you, how did you get it? You can't do nothing but point. See, if you had something to do with it, well, you know, I got a degree in this, and, you know, I had about a few million dollars in the bank, so I went over here. God don't get no glory out of that, because that now I'm pointing at me. But when I say, man, I didn't have two nickels to rub together, and God brought me this bill. I didn't have nothing in my house, but God brought me this. I didn't have, I had a, I had a 320, if this is an impossible credit score, but God gave me this house. God is saying, I'm going to do it to con I'll, yes. I'll cause the weak things of this world to confound the mighty. Yes. I'll cause the foolish things of this world to confound the people who think they got, well, I know how it works. You're supposed to have this, and you're supposed to have this, and you're supposed to have this. And God said, no, nah, they don't need none of that. All they need is my favor. Yes. And I'm going to show you that all they needed was my favor. Yes. And so when the glory is to be given, all you're going to be able to say is, but God. I knew that was nothing but God. When Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego was in the, in the fiery furnace and the people were standing around, he had all of the people of the land. They astounded. Now, I know that furnace was hot. In fact, he, he heated it up six times. Ain't no way humanly possible anybody could have went through that fire and survived. But God. But God. God is saying, I want to do a but God blessing. A but God blessing. And that's why the enemy sometimes he tries to fight us. Oh, yeah. He's trying to fight. See, that anchor, that anchor is saying, I'm still going to profess. The enemy wants you to move. Yeah. Just move. And I, when you say, I'm not moving, I'm going to stand on this spot. I'm still going to proclaim that God is good. I'm still going to proclaim that God is going to do it. The enemy yeah. still trying to get you to move. Yeah. Move from what? Move from that profession. Say something different. Yeah. Say what you see. Yeah. Say what you feel. Say what it's looking like. And God said, no, don't you say nothing different than what I put in your mouth in this word. Speak the word only. Jesus told the devil so many times, it is written. It's written. 
It's written that I'm the blessed of the Lord and that I am to receive an inheritance. God has an inheritance for me. I was blessed. I don't know if I shared this with everybody, but I was blessed. There was a brother. I was, we were at a class and he, and he said, I inherited this grocery store. And I said, well, that was good. That's great. I'm thinking of the natural. You know, he said inherited. And he said, no, brother, I, I didn't mean it like that. I inherited four acres in a grocery store in the community. My daddy did that for me. I say, glory be to God. God is showing us that I'm not limited. Favor, and then what you also want with that, coupled with that, is wisdom. When I give it to you, I'm going to give you the wisdom to know how to operate it, to know what to do with it. I'm going to bless you with it, but I need you to be able to have the wisdom of Solomon to know how to operate. To know how, who to bring in, who not to bring in, who to bring alongside you, who to stay, stay off over there. I'm going to give you all that type of wisdom. I'm going to give you all of that. And then I'm going to give you the wisdom to understand and to not be discouraged. When you, when, when you see some little bit of opposition, you'll know that it ain't nothing but the enemy trying to steal your joy. He gives, he gives us wisdom so that we stay encouraged. In Luke chapter 5. Verses 1 through 9, and I'll read. Luke chapter 5, <clears throat> verses 1 through 9. And I can tell you myself that I've been right here, smack dab in this, this portion of scripture right here. Many times over. <clears throat> and it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Gennesaret, <coughs> and he saw two ships standing by the lake, but the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. And he entered into the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust a little from the land, thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down. <coughs> And taught the people out of the ship. Now, when he had left speaking, he said to Simon, Launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a drought. These were fishermen. These, these were people who, who knew what they were doing. You, you, you name the trade. They, they were in education. And now I know education. And they, and, and they were in business. And now I know business. And this is how it works. And this is, this is a down season. And, it, and, and the market is like this. And, and, I, and I know how real estate works. And this is this. And you need this and this. And Jesus steps on the boat and disrupts all of that. And he says, launch out your nets into the deep. So Simon, which is Peter, he answers in the only way that he can perceive at the moment in the natural. He said, answering and said unto him, Master, we have toiled all night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. Jesus, I, I know you, you're good at walking on water and, you know, you're good at turning water into wine, but I, I'm, I, I, I fish. This is what I do. This is my profession. So we tried it already. We even tried this. We even tried that. And, and this is what, you know, this is the results. That's what Peter was saying to Jesus. Not perceiving, having a revelation at that moment, because sometimes when you're tired, when you have toiled, it takes something out of you. I've been there, tried this and tried that and, and went into this and went into that and trying to get something to work. We were in business. And we were just, man, started staffing age, staffing age, and just, it's okay, God. Lord, maybe this ain't, she said, well, maybe this ain't what God wants to do. I said, no, God called me to, you know, to help men and women records to get their, you know, get their uh, uh, jobs and, and teach them everything like that. And so one day I got a phone call. Now, mind you, I had toiled. Flyers, door knocking, business calls, meetings, sat down, rubbed, whatever you want to do. Had got a little success, but hadn't really seen any success. Got a phone call. Sat down with somebody one day, business meeting. 
It was a brother in Christ there. It didn't turn into a business meeting. It turned into a church, to a Bible study. I said, okay, God, well, maybe this was what it was for. You know, we wanted us to have some study and whatnot, meet the brother. It was a good brother we met. We're still friends with him to this day. And the guy who we were there to get a business deal with, he, he said, no, I can't use your services at this time. So I'm like, okay, right, whatever. Whatever, God, you know, whatever you want to do. And so the brother called up one day, one Friday. It was a late Friday. He said, hey, I got this, this lady. She needs some people, you know, uh, for her... Uh, condominium complex and some janitorial workers and everything like that. It's pretty, pretty, pretty nice contract and everything like that. I don't even want to, I don't even want I don't think that if I included myself in it that, you know, that it would be profitable to me. So I'm just going to give it to you. My relationship, person you never met before, I'm just going to give it to you. And that's where our most profitable contract came from. But what God was showing me and what God continues to show me, it's not about you. Sometimes we think it's about us. I had a brother call me out of the blue. God is saying, seek him first. Don't worry about how this is going to work because your success, Joshua said, if you want good success, he said, meditate in the word day and night. And let it not depart out of that mouth. For then thou shalt have good success, and I shall make your way prosperous. So in following God, sitting in a meeting with someone, it had nothing to do with business. God said, I'm going to show you that I'm sovereign. Here is God showing Peter. It ain't got nothing to do with it, what you can, how good you are on the fisher. It has nothing to do with your expertise. It has nothing to do with your training. And so he said, let the, and, and he said, nevertheless, I like what he, nevertheless, at thy word, let down the net. And when, when he, when they had done this, when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their net break. And they beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other ship that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both the ships, so they began to sink. My God. When Simon and Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he was astonished, and all that were with him at the drought of the fishes which they had taken. Peter, he was convicted. Lord, I, I misjudged. I, I thought fishing had to do with me being a good fish. I had nothing, I didn't know it had everything to do with you. Mm -hmm. Success, failure, blessing, it all got to do with you. Yeah. When I walk into my inheritance, that's why he warned the children of Israel. Now, when I bring you into this place, just remember how you got it. Just remember who was the one that blessed you. As a matter of fact, I'd rather it be the, the lopsided odds. I'd rather it look like nothing else could have happened but, but God. So that when you walk into it, you're going to tell people, I ain't had nothing to do with this. Don't even look. I don't know how, but God did. I don't, I don't mean looking around like, whoa, wow, you must have did something great. No, he did something great. Simon Peter could do nothing more than point to God at his blessing. And I like what the, the, the scripture indicates here with that there was an overflow. Yes. There was an overflow to the point where he was able to bless other people. Abraham, I'm going to bless you to be a blessing. Overflow. And so in, in, in closing, what will you do with your inheritance? All right. What will you do with your inheritance because and I'll read Jesus is going to give us a parable some of the parables we see that he gives people different types of uh, different uh, amounts of talents but in this one he gives the same people the same amount Luke 19 <clears throat> verses 12 through 27, I'm going to read it rather quickly. <clears throat> he said, therefore, a certain man went into a far country to receive for himself 
a kingdom and to return to God. Excuse me, and to return, excuse me. <clears throat> and he called his ten servants and delivered them ten pounds, and he said unto them, Occupy till I come. It's powerful. Occupy till I come. Occupy. But his citizens hated him and sent a message after him saying, We will not have this man reign to reign over us. And it came to pass that when he returned, having received the kingdom, then he commanded these servants to be called to him, whom he had given money, that he might know how much every man had gained by trading. Then came the first, saying, Lord, thy pound hath gained ten pounds. And then he said unto him, Well, good, my favor, oh, excuse me, well, good servant, because thou hast been faithful. In very little, thou have authority over ten cities. God multiplied. He's saying, whatever I give you, be faithful with it. And the second came, saying, Thou, Lord, thy pound hath gained five pounds. And he said likewise to him, Be thou also over five cities. And another came, saying, Lord, behold, here is thy pound which I have kept laid up in a napkin. For I feared thee, because thou art an astute man. Thou takest up that thou layest not down, and reapest that thou didst not sow. And he said unto him, Out of thine mouth will I judge thee, thou wicked servant. Thou knewest that I was an astute man. I guess I'm pronouncing that right. Oster, man, taking up that I had taken up that I had laid not down and reaping that I did not sow. Wherefore thou gavest thou not my money in the bank that at my coming I might have required my own usury. And he said unto them that stood, take from him the pound and give it to him that have ten pounds. And he said unto him, Lord, he hath ten pounds. For I said unto you that every one which hath shall be given, and from him that hath not, even that he hath shall be taken away. But those mine enemies, which would not that I should reign over them, bring hither and slay them before me consequences for not using what God had given them. Consequences. When God causes us to walk into inheritance and to be, we talk about the blessings of Abraham, there comes a responsibility, there comes a stewardship. But one of the things that, I, I, that I'm careful with, I say, Lord, I don't want to, I don't ever want to misuse what you've given me. I don't want to ever misappropriate. I don't ever want to walk outside of your wisdom with what you've entrusted into my hand. And we see that it's not only just a principle for the kingdom of God, because I tell people, if we do everything in this life and we get all the accolades and everything, but we get up there and he doesn't say, well done, my good and faithful servant. How much does their praise mean today? And there's a lot of people, and I say they got a Hall of Fame for basketball, football, and they got all baseball, and they get the people with all the Grammys, arms, and everything, and the greatest rapper, and he got the Lexus and all this other kind of stuff. But when he get up there, he can't point at, Lord, I was a Grammy Award winner, I, I won 10 awards, I, I got the Nobel Peace Prize, depart from me. I never knew you. Now that's something. Yes, yeah. I never yes. knew you. My God. We ain't never had no relationship. Oh, and then the enormity of that moment when you know that it's final for all of eternity. Yes, yes. For all of eternity. So my mind is constantly thinking about and stayed on Lord whatever it is that you have for me to do. I want to live it poured out. I don't want to leave anything that you wanted for me to do undone. 
I don't want anything that you would have to me to say. Nobody that you would have me to encourage. Nobody that you would have me to put my hand on their shoulder and just and just and just love them into Christ. Nobody. I don't want to do. I don't want to have none of that on my mind or my conscience when it's time for me to go. And so God is saying to these servants, "What I give to you, what I'm causing you to inherit, use it for the advancement of the kingdom of God. The advancement of the kingdom of God." We're living for this life and the next. We have a dual agenda. We are living for this and the next. If you look at the book of Revelation, there's a millennial reign. There's a time when Jesus is coming back. We're going to reign as kings on the earth. And the God is saying, I want you to live like that, with that on your mind. With that on your mind. And people who have it. There's people who have it, but are not using it for the kingdom of God. Yes. They're not using it for the king. We 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 pass by so many different schools there in, in, in places where they got school space and this that. And we think, my God, what how what impact could they have for the community yeah. with bringing these babies in like that? Yeah. But the wisdom, the wisdom of God. God never let me be without your wisdom. Yeah. Never let me get to the point to like when they get these buildings and they get these all oh, these these edifices and they don't use them for the kingdom of God. They forgot. They forgot. I, I gave you that so that you could be a bit, you could be a blessing to this community. Be a blessing. I bless you to be a blessing. And he said, the, the one who had a little, give him five cities. Yeah. He used a little bit I had, and he get. We look at the Bible and we see constantly over and over again. A woman with a little bit of meal and a little bit of oil. God said, if you use that, it'll never dry. Your vats will overflow. Two fish, five loaves of bread, a little bit. He said, I just give you just, just, just a little bit. And when you take it and put it into my hand, and trust me, he multiplied it. He fed 5,000. He was showing us multiplication. What I can do when you put what I give you Back into my hand and you say, here, Lord, whatever it is that you want to do with this, whatever it is that you want to do, use me, use me as an instrument to be able to carry it out. Praise God. So in closing, just be encouraged. I believe that it's time. It's time to inherit that. As I was was standing over there and I was in praise and worship, God was saying as the kingdom of God advances, I'm causing people to advance. It's it's time. I need the advancement of the kingdom of God. People say the world is getting darker, but greater is he who is in us than he who is in the world. Greater is he who is in us than he who is in the world. And the reason why he needs the kingdom advance is because I need souls. People who are soul reaping minded, soul reaping minded. Your mind, your mind is on reaping souls for the kingdom of God. I got to advance you. I got to make sure that you got every square inch of land, built, everything that you need to advance the kingdom of God. I need you to be in place. Just like there's any war going on. I don't know if you ever watched Desert Storm or anything like that. They talked about strongholds. How how if we get this particular corner right here, then, 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 then we'll be we'll be in an advantage. And if we get this over here, then God is saying, I'm positioning my people. I'm positioning my people. My God. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Positioning. 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 At this time, we we always open the floor for anyone that wants to receive salvation, uh, or anyone that needs prayer. Anyone that needs prayer, we're definitely here to stand and touch and agree with you on prayer. We-